Today's the day. Today we are finally comparing these two guys, the Canon C200 and the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Tune in guys, this is a great this topic. <laughs> What is up everybody, James Jackson here. I'm back again with another video. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all content so you can get content like this where we discuss and break down different cameras for your video production filming like these two right here. If you've been following my channel for a couple weeks now, you've noticed I've been doing a comparison series basically on these two exclusive cameras the one on my left which is the Canon C200 and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. These two are very interesting cameras both with a lot of similarities and both with very very unique specific things to themselves. And just to start off let's get the pricing out of the way. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is probably one of the most popular cameras right now to the point where it's damn near impossible to find one and that is because of that pricing and the fact that it itch for what it does it can go for thirteen hundred dollars whereas the canon c200 which has been out for um, a couple years now this one is seventy five hundred dollars and i believe recently it just dropped down to sixty five hundred dollars so you're probably wondering why in the world would i compare these two cameras very different in shape very different in body they have a lot of things different but as i mentioned in the beginning they have a lot of things that they have in common and I wanted to do this, and I've been showing you guys comparisons of, you know, dynamic range, skin tones, low light. And today I sort of wanted to go in and, and discuss and break down both my experience just testing it, but as well using it professionally. Um, because all those things definitely factor in into what type of camera you may want to get. And there's two questions I kind of want to answer today. The first one is, is a camera that costs $1,300 can hold its own to a camera that is almost five times its asking price. And then the second question that I want to ask is, is that camera that costs five times its asking price, is it worth the value that it's cost? We'll see if today sort of either changes your mind or, you know, you know doubles down on your way, meh, way of thinking. But let's dive into it. I want to talk first and foremost, what a lot of you guys are definitely interested about, and that is the image quality. And for this, um, they are both, they have both very uh, similar capable image qualities. Both of these guys shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second. Both cameras can shoot raw internally up to 4K 60 frames per second. And both have right about the same amount of dynamic range, which is roughly about 13 stops. Now the C200 does have C-Log2, which is, can, capable of getting up to 15 stops of dynamic range. Um, the sensor just doesn't reach that far. Uh, this, uh, it's, uh, I've done quite a few tests and it's closer to around the 13, 14 stop range, mainly more towards the 13, but you may be able to eke out 14, but really it's around that 13, 13 stops of dynamic range. And then the pocket cinema camera is, you know, touted as having 13 stops of dynamic range. And from my testings, uh, that is true, However, you have to really know the camera a little bit more than necessarily this camera to sort of maximize that dynamic range. And we'll get to that uh, later on in the video, especially when we start discussing lighting and low light situation. Um, and, and like I said, both can shoot uh, raw internally. However, this is where the pocket cinema camera takes over in terms of image quality over the Canon C200. The Pocket 4K can shoot 12-bit RAW in all frame rates and all flavors. The C200 can only do 12-bit RAW up to 30 frames per second. If you go up to 60 frames per second, it will then drop down to 10-bit. It's still great 10-bit RAW, um, but I definitely would not use uh, C-Log2 in that reference simply because you will get a lot of noise and a lot of artifacts because it's not, it's not having the bit depth it needs to get to stretch that log curve. Whereas this, it's 12 bit all the way around, no matter if it's 24p, 30p, 60p. Even if you go down to 1080, up to 120 frames per second, it is 12 bit raw. If you drop to 120 frames per second on this camera, you are dropping to an 8 bit codec and to be quite frank with you, 
the one the 120 on the C200 is not worth it. It's 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 not up to much standards in my personal opinion. So in terms of frame rates and in terms of frame rates, in terms of image quality and capabilities, the Pocket 4K definitely comes out on top on this one. And this leads us into the next big thing, which is Codex. Now, with the C200, this was one of the probably the most controversial parts of the camera when it first came out, simply because it sort of had a bipolar uh, style in terms of Codex. Uh, with, with the C200, you had either 12-bit or 10-bit RAW, or you had an 8-bit internal MP4 or uh, through firmware XF AVC. Uh, now, XF AVC, I actually like a lot more than MP4 simply because it allows you to manipulate the audio as metadata and post. That is really the main difference between the two, but it helps a lot, especially when you have multiple sources of audio. And we'll get to audio in, later on in the video, but in terms of codexes, I like that more. But as I said, this has sort of been like a bipolar camera when it comes to that. There was no middle ground 10-bit. Um, so for a lot of people, that was a bit of an issue. However, I do want to stress out the 8-bit codex on the Canon C200 is probably some of the best 8-bit codex you will ever come across. The images are still stellar. They're still amazing. So don't sleep on that. However, we got to be honest, keep it 100. Pocket 4K easily takes this in terms of uh, codexes. The Pocket 4K on the lowest quality can shoot ProRes co uh, codexes, ProRes proxy being the lowest, and then LT, then 422, and then HQ. And then we get into the RAW, and depending on which firmware of the Pocket 4K you are using or you're at, you e can, your either can shoot in Cinema DNG in 3 to 4 or 5 to 1, or uh, if you update it to the later firmware updates, you will get Blackmagic RAW. Now, if you aren't familiar with Blackmagic RAW, it's a new flavor of RAW that Blackmagic themselves built specifically for their individual cameras. And the RAW in the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera is designed to talk with this specific camera. And what's great about it is that you can have so many gr uh, flavors of compressions of RAW, all the way down to 12 to 1, which you can actually record 4K 60 12-bit RAW files to an SD card if your SD card is fast enough, which is, you know, unbelievable in terms of what the capabilities you can do with that raw codex, and then you get all the abilities of, you know, pulling and pulling and making changing metadata in post. With the C200, you only can do three to one up to, for 24 and 30p, and then 60p, it's five to one. So those are the only options you have. So you have more limited codexes and limited options in terms of the uh, compressions with the raw. So overall, in terms of image quality, you know, the C200 delivers some beautiful, beautiful images. It has a great color science. However, I do have to give it to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K for image quality, just all those flavor of codexes. It gives the same amount of dynamic range as the C200. It has a lot of great capabilities in terms of codexes. Now, let's talk about low light. Low light is interesting because depending on what you're looking for in terms of a low light shot, your, uh, what you may prefer which camera would be better uh, may be different. But let's just start in terms of noise. In terms of overall noise, the C200 does do better than the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in terms of just how it handles noise in low light situations. You can go up all the way up to 10,000 ISO on the C200 and you get relatively low noise. With the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, once you can get all the way up to probably around 6,400 ISO and then after that, the noise starts getting a little bit too more prevalent. So I would definitely say, in terms of noise, the C200. However, that is the only point in low light that I agree. I think the C200 is better in. Overall, I think the Pocket Cinema Camera is better in low light. One, because of its dual native ISO and the way the dual native ISO works specifically. Um, I mentioned this in a video a long time ago, but basically how you set the native ISO can also dictate how much noise you have. You're, you have to be very, very subconscious about the ISO you choose with the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. If you have that concept and, and you also have the understanding of how the ISO works and how middle grade shifts depending on the ISO you select, 
This thing is a monster in low light. At ISO 1250, this camera destroys this camera in low light. The, C, uh, the Pocket 4K, it doesn't have as good of highlight roll off. It's t it's, the highlight roll off is terrible at 1250. However, if you're really shooting in a really underlit situation, this camera d does so much better um, at 1250 and 1600 compared to this camera. And the other major thing that makes it, to me, a better low light camera is it's something that no other camera has currently that I am aware of. And that is the fact that this camera, when it goes up in ISO, it doesn't shift color. Most cameras, when they go up in ISO, they shift colors, they typically shift to the green, and you, lose, you start losing the saturation of the color as you go up in ISO. That's not the case with this camera. This camera, color-wise, stays roughly the same all the way up until probably about the last ISO. That's when it shifts. But outside of that, the colors are roughly the same. You will lose colors very quickly the higher you go up in ISOs on the C200. So in terms of that, in terms of low light, I got to give it to the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. This thing is a monster in low light. Now, at this point in time, you're probably wondering why in the hell are we still talking about the C200 now? You know, it's, you know, five times more of the price, yet the Pocket Cinema Camera has the same amount of dynamic range. It has a better image quality overall. It has better frame rates, it has more options of codexes, it has better media management. Why are we still talking about the C200? Well, here's where the C200 starts coming in and swinging, and swinging hard, in my opinion. Let's go into ergonomics and functionality. And this is where, my friends, I gotta start, you know, giving it back over to the C200. The build design and the quality of the body of the, of the, of the C200, I'm sorry, is way better uh, built and way better designed than the C200. With the C200, you do feel like it's got it sturdy. It can take a lot of damn beatings. Even though this is like a, I know this is like a sort of, um, it's not plastic, but it's a high, more, but it is, it's kind of like a high-end plastic. It still feels cheap. Um, and I would definitely be more concerned if something happens to this more so than something happens to this. Um, but overall, it also just, in terms of uh, assist features, the C200 has some amazing s assist features. Um, I've mentioned this to all the times on my previous videos on the C200. Let's start with autofocus. Dual pixel autofocus in this camera is, is game changing. This camera is still the only camera on the market right now that has the capabilities of recording 12-bit 4K RAW internally that has a great continuous autofocus. There is no other camera on the market right now that can do it that as good as this camera does. And to so all you guys that say pros don't use autofocus, shit. Pros use autofocus, they just don't rely on it. There is a difference. But autofocus is still just like a camera, a tool, a tool for us to get our jobs done and get a job done that can probably save us time and money. I'm gonna be talking about time and money a lot and what, uh, regarding the C200 in the, in the Pocket 4K. If I don't have to do a shoot two or three more times because the focus was missed and it just hits it on the first time, that's, that's production time that is saved that I don't have, that me or the client doesn't have to worry about going to waste. And even if you start wanting to go into like pros don't use autofocus and you want to take away the autofocus, fine. This is still has an amazing focus feature and that is this focus, manual focus assist. Ugh. Manual focus assist feature that basically highlight green on where you are selecting your focus on, on the screen, it will highlight green when the subject is in focus. It is amazing. It is such an amazing focus feature. It's probably one of the best focus assist features that I have. It is significantly better than, than focus peaking, which is really the only type of focus assist feature that the Pocket Cinema camera has outside of you know, two times magnification, which does help. The problem I have is that um, with the Pocket 4K, it's really hard to s really judge. The screen quality is, is, is good. It is good. It's a good screen quality. However, when, when it comes to focusing, there is, especially if you're shooting fast aperture, like, you know, you're shooting with a fast glass, it is much, much more difficult to maintain or try to pull focus properly with the Pocket 4K. 
than the C than obviously the C200. And obviously this camera does not have any continuous autofocus at all. It has a one push autofocus feature, which is hit or miss at best. So through functionality, there is no if in reality, there is no autofocus. No good to me, no good autofocus with this camera. You have you are going to be exclusively manually focused with this. And if that's the way you prefer, then that works for you. However, Having the ability to use dual pixel autofocus and have a great continuous autofocus, and also I can pick track with autofocus, and even better, we'll get to it in a second. We'll get to it in a second. I'll, I'll get to that right in a second. Actually, no, let's go into it right now. The next thing that's great about this is Wi Fi. Both of these have wireless remote features. Um, for the Pocket 4K, it is uh, Bluetooth and GPS, and then on the C200, it's Wi Fi. C200, um, does it amazingly. They both work really, really great. So let me go with the Pocket 4K for a second. The Pocket 4K has a great, actually I like the UI of the Pocket 4K. You can change all the features you want. You can change your, you know, your frame rates, resolution, codexes. You can change white balances, ISO. You can change all those features. And also it has, I, I'm, I only can speak about the Android version. I cannot speak about the, um, the, the, uh, iOS versions, but on the Android versions, you are able to pull focus from your phone if you're using um, electronic lenses. And this does work, and I've tested it. It does also work if you have a speed booster, like a Metabone speed booster on it, and go into a, a lens like the Sigma 18 to 35. It does work. Um, it's Though it's not something I would necessarily rely on, simply because it does lag. It, it's not as responsive. However, now let's get to the C200's Wi-Fi thing. That thing is amazing. Because not only I can do everything that I just told you about, um, minus manually focusing, you can't do that. However, what it does do, what the Pocket Cinema Camera's Bluetooth does not do, is it has a live view. So I can actually see what I am filming. And not only that, I can actually touch on my phone where I want to put my focus on and it will and it will focus on where I touch on my phone. So I and I can initiate uh, tracking on my phone that way. So if I want to focus on my hand and tap it that way, I can do that and it will track my hand throughout the shot. With the $7,500 that I paid for the C200, you get a monitor, you get a top handle, which I didn't like, I will admit. I, I think it's a terrible top handle. I replaced it with this small rig one. You get the top handle, you get the cable to connect the monitor, you get the monitor, you get the side handle. The only, now this is the B version, and I'll get to why I chose the B version. The only difference between this, it's the same price as this, the original one, at least the kit on B&H, if you order this from b &H. It's the same price. The only difference is you don't have the EVF, but everything else is the same. With, and you got, but the key thing I'm trying to talk about is the articulating LCD screen. I can flip, rotate this, set this however I want to, any place I want to. With the Pocket 4K, it has a fixed uh, monitor on the back of the screen. You cannot move it, you can't touch it. Which means is if you, in any point where your uh, field of view is not directly in front of you, where if it's low or high, you're going to have to put an external monitor on that. And so that's going to add more stuff. While this is $1,300 at base value, you still will need to put in pro almost the exact same amount, if not more, on different features to make the camera work and work properly. First off, you need to have a battery solution. Me personally, I would say get a V-mount solution. I know some of you guys are not against it, but understand, this is a cinema camera. This is not a mirrorless or a DSLR camera. Don't treat it like a mirrorless or a DSLR camera. Treat it like a cinema camera. And with cinema cameras and high-end cameras, you use professional batteries, V-mount or Go-mount. And, and I'm telling you, doing it that way will make your job so much easier. Now, it also means you also have to rig it up, which means you're probably going to have to get a rail system. You're going to have to get um, a monitor. You're definitely going to have to get an external monitor. You're going to have to get um, some sort of focus, uh, uh, focus pull. All this stuff starts adding up. I have probably, I'm going to tell you right now, even though this costs $1,300, I probably spent probably around $4,000 on this camera to make it work how I like it to work. With this camera, I didn't need to add anything else. The only thing I added was like an external monitor for outdoors, and that's simply because this monitor is not great outdoors. 
But the autofocus is so good, as long as I got my framing how I want it, even though I may not be able to see what's in focus, it will focus and I, I can trust it. But the point I'm trying to make is that it, really, if you just want to just go with this setup, you can just go with this setup and it will work. With the Pocket 4K, you're going to have to add much more stuff in order to make it work. And all that money that you thought you were saving piles up. And I didn't get to the best part, and that is this has built-in ND filters. This does not have built-in ND filters. And this is some of the best NDs. You don't have to worry about putting on a variable NDs and then having this big old color shift. This has NDs that are built and designed to work with this sensor, and you can get up to 10 stops of NDs on this camera, which is great, especially if you're doing anything in a, in a hot summer day by a beach where there's a lot of reflection. This works amazingly well. Um, it is one of the things that constantly keeps me as that ND. ND built-in NDs are life-changing. If you've never worked with built-in NDs, you have no idea what you're missing. As much as I love the Pocket 4K, the time it takes to just screw this on, get it up, uh, shift it, and then test to see if it's pushing too far, and then I have to change the ISO to, to what I want to, or maybe I have to just offset it some other way with the iris. I don't have to do that. I never have to go, you know, I never have to change my settings with this camera because of how much, in, not just the NDs, but the amount of NDs I can do with this, which leads me into my next topic, which is gimbal work. Now, you would think gimbals, oh, easy, Pocket 4K. It's lighter, it's smaller, it's easier to build, it's easier to sort of work around. Obviously, you would choose this over the C200 for gimbal work. Ah, uh, no, I actually, I, you would be wrong. The C200 is much better for gimbal work, especially if you get the B version, which is this version I have right here. If you get the B version of the C200, this is much better and much faster to balance on a gimbal than the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. I've mentioned this on my video with the Ronin S. I've mentioned this uh, quite a few times. The main problem with the Pocket 4K is the design. It is super wide, but not only is it wide, the weight on the, of the Pocket 4K is, all on the, is majority on the left side. So because of how wide it is, you have to offset it on gimbals to the left. And because you offset it off to the left, you're putting more weight to the left that's already off, offset to the left. So you now have to, now it's a lot tougher to counterbalance. You gotta offer some sort of counterbalance to go to offset all that weight you're putting on that side. Now, the way I have done it, and this is probably the best way, I've mentioned this before, is I have this right here. I have this uh, focus assist feature, uh, uh, wireless fo uh, follow focus system that DJI offers. And basically, I put it on the right-hand side and set it here, and I basically use this to offset all that weight. And it works. It works really well. Um, but again, that's more, but I have to make sure that is working. Then I have to, then I have to offset the pocket camera, then I gotta offset that, then I got then I gotta start doing the balance. With this, all, once you take everything off of this camera and just have the body and the lens alone, balancing takes a matter of seconds with this camera. The only ones you may be having trouble balancing is with like heavier lenses like the Sigma lenses. Um, there, you will have some trouble trying to get balances on a Sigma lens, but you can balance it. It will work and it, you can get it to balance. Um, you just may need to do some extra finessing with it but it's much faster, and because it has autofocus, I don't have to worry about doing manual focus, I just let the autofocus do its job, and it works beautifully. I love it, I love the fact that I can do it. And more so, I can, with the Wi-Fi app, going back to the Wi-Fi app, I could be um, having, if I have a, you know, a DP, I could be pulling focus um, from my phone, if I wanna set to a certain point, while he's just operating the gimbal. Not only is it better, and faster to set up and, and easier to use on gimbals, it gives you more function, you have more flexibility and functionality compared to the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Now I'm gonna just, uh, final comparison I'm gonna discuss is, you know, work experience. And I'm gonna be honest with you, and this may seem kind of cheating, both of them are great 
for work experience. You just need to know what you're getting yourself into. But I have used them both of these cameras for music videos. I've used both of these cameras for weddings. I've used both of these cameras for commercial works. I have used them for every type of work that I, that I do. At the end of the day, in terms of work environment and professional working experiences, I'm gonna give it to both because both are capable of doing that. So now we're coming to the end of it. Which camera do I personally think should you go with? Should you go with the C200 or should you go with the Pocket 4K? Well, I, I say both. I, I, and I'm dead serious. I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm not trying to cheat. I'm serious. If you have the means to get both, I'm telling you guys, you should get both because these cameras complement each other so well. It's like, it's crazy. Like, whatever their weakness is, the other camera just picks up it. So they have a lot of things in common that can work in all types of environments. But at the same time, whatever their weaknesses and setbacks are, the other camera resolves it. You know, this, you know, this has uh, broadcast standard codexes in, that you can deliver right to the gate. Uh, where this, you may have to go with the raw format and then process it in post. Uh, this has autofocus, this doesn't have autofocus. Uh, this has up to four channels of audio, but you can have, and you can have three different independent sources of audio from this camera, whereas this one can only have up to two channels of audio and up to two different sources of audio um, outside of using some sort of external device, sound mixer. So audio, so this has, you know, the better audio features this has, you know, the fa this is the faster workhorse, but this is the powerhouse image quality. It has great raw capabilities. If you have the means to get both, I would definitely say get both, you know, which speaks a lot, which at the end of the day speaks so much about the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, simply because this is a camera that is almost a fifth of the cost of this camera. So to me, is this camera can this camera hold its own against this uh, camera, this $7,500 camera? Yes, absolutely, it does. This camera holds its hold and then some. Um, however, does this mean that the C200 is not worth its value? No, not at all. And this leads to my final point. If you were to say, James, no, put a gun to my head, no, unacceptable, you can't pick both, you have to choose between one or the other. Which camera would you choose? And if that was my situation where I had to basically give up one of these cameras, I'm sorry, I would say goodbye to the Pocket 4K. I love the camera. I love the camera so much. But in terms of, you know, time and time management and what you can do with this camera, this camera is almost idiot proof. I have to make sure people really understand what this camera is capable of and how it's uh, it's function and there's still some people that uh, that don't really haven't who may even have this camera who haven't fully unlocked and understand the capabilities of this camera this one you don't have to do it it's just straight grab and go it is one of you know it's this camera is sort of like it has the tools to give you the best performance but you need to work you really need to work to make that performance work for you this camera is a partnership while this is sort of like you have to be more like a, a tool that you have to program and work with. This is a partner. This is a partner on the production camera. This is, a, this is a member of the crew because of how well it does audio, how well it does with pulling focus, how well it does in low light and so many other different things. It does so many things well. Maybe not as great as the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, but well enough that it can hold its own and it saves so much time on production and so much time in post. YDR, I didn't get to the picture profile of YDR, but YDR is still to me one of the best picture profiles. If you're trying to avoid doing color grading, if you just need something to turn around quickly, YDR is like the best profile I have ever came across. It's like great right out the camera. You just go in, do some editing, maybe you just do a little soft grade with, you know, with the shadows and highlights, but outside of that, it is, it is perfectly fine as it is if you just want to get something out and has to turn it out quickly. With this one, no matter what, you're st you still would have to grade it because 
as much as there is a video, you know, you can put a Rex 709, bake it in, it's nowhere near as good as just deal with, dealing with it in post um, and just grading it yourself. So that is still going to slow you down compared to this. And time is money. So another YouTuber, and I want to just bring this up really quickly before I go. Another YouTuber did, uh, Max, you probably know him as Max. He did a, a video of basically on why he sold the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and why it's such and why it was such a big deal. Um, and the thing he brought up was the fact that he can make so much money on the C200 more so than the Pocket 4K simply because of the cost you have to add to it as well as the time it takes to get everything set up. And a lot of people got a, uh, disagreed with him about it. And there's some things he said that I, are inaccurate about the Pocket 4K. I'll get to that later. I digress. But the, th the main point he was trying to make is very valid. The, pro the thing is, as much as you may be spending, even though you may sit and calculate the cost of the Pocket 4K, even with the additional features you will need to get it running, and still say it's still cheaper than this camera, that may be true, but the upfront cost of this, compared to the long-term cost of, bo of this camera, is nothing compared to the long-term cost that this camera has. This camera, you can go in and get more projects done because of how quickly you can turn around and turn projects around. This camera, you definitely have to do some finesse, and it's worth every single penny of it. Don't get it twisted. It is worth every single penny. This, there's nothing in, in its price range at this point that can match this camera. No people bring up the Z Cam E2. No, I'm sorry. Me personally, no. There's nothing right now in this price point that can match this camera. This, but however, what this camera is capable of doing and how uh, quickly I can get things done, I'll choose this camera every day and twice on Sunday. But this camera is still, to me, one of the most revolutionary cameras of the modern era. Thank you for staying to me if you're still watching this video. But hopefully you continue watching. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care, everyone.